Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond, welcome back to the YouTube video, and today I want to be showcasing one of the web category challenges from this year's Google CTF that was online this past weekend. The sun is like right there, so please forgive me if I have apparently a halo on the side of my head. Um, but before we dive in, I need to put out a disclaimer. I had not solved this during the competition, during the capture the flag itself. Uh, I'm not that good, <laughs> first of all. Uh, and I, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on this. It's funny, I think my friends and I opened up the Google CTF and we looked at it for like maybe an hour or less. And then we're like, okay, uh, we should probably go prepare and keep building challenges for the CTF that we're hosting next month. So secret spill there. But admittedly, I did not spend a ton of time on this. So I'd love to showcase more Google CTF stuff for you. But honestly, I'm not that smart. <laughs> I'm still learning. And especially for capture the flags that are like this, that are legit. Uh, man, I still have a lot to learn too. So... I will be showcasing this with the help of write-ups that I have read, and I do want to use that to footstomp and emphasize, don't hesitate to read write-ups. We're all trying to learn. The whole point is to get smarter and get better. So I have looked at this more when I was going through it the first time in my perspective. I'll showcase the kind of the rabbit holes that I fell down, and then when I put it away and I didn't go through the solution, now that I know that through the write-up, I wanted to share that with you. So that's my disclaimer. Anyway, let's dive in. This is pasteurized. This is literally the easiest, like, lowest point value challenge that Google CTF had. I still wanted to showcase it for you because there might be some kind of cool and neat and interesting tricks. So let's fire it up. This challenge says it doesn't look secure. I would even put the sort. Uh, I wouldn't put even the littlest secret in here. My source tells me that the third parties might have implanted it with their little treats already. Can you prove me right? So we have this URL. Clicking on this, it looks like pasteurize, and I <laughs> pronounce it pasteurize because I realize that's kind of the the gimmick of this challenge, where you can create a new paste, and we could. Theoretically, just type in anything here. So please subscribe. Sure, I'll submit that. And that will apparently render out my input on the page. And I guess that's kind of the ID or the number numeric value for that specific note or paste that we've gone in here. We could share with TJ Mike. Interesting. And we can go back. Okay, so I can add in anything we particularly want here. So since we had that option to share with TJ Mike, that's oftentimes very similar to like a, okay, report to admin, or maybe TJ Mike is the admin. And if we can input page, input data onto a page and it might be shown again, potentially this web challenge is setting us up for a cross-site scripting attack. If we are reporting it to an admin, maybe we might do some interesting dynamic like browser stuff getting things on the client side of his browser and maybe he will render a javascript and some of the client side code that will execute due to cross-site scripting we could grab some information from his perspective like grab the admin cookie or view the admin page or do some other drive-by stuff and bring him along to other pages that's all the neat and interesting things we can do with cross-site scripting so as a thought for that i can try and enter some html tags like h1 like a big header and see if that gets rendered out or reflected to me and looks like that does that did increase the size here and we could share that with tj mike just to see what happens it says tj mike will appreciate your paste shortly okay uh i see a little captcha down here where my face is let me try and hide that so you can see look looks like it does need to be kind of put together in the web browser so doing some tricks might get in the way if we try to automate this or do some other things without avoiding that captcha anyway since we know we do potentially have some code that could come through here we could try interesting things like a script and then let's do an alert one and script see if we can run javascript code and that didn't do anything seemingly which is weird. Uh, so we could do kind of our actual normal stuff. Let's look at the source code and really see what's going on here. Looks like they actually even reference the source code of this web page. It's hidden. It's not going to be displayed on the web page, but that might be something we could access or go to. So let's go that. Let's download that. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to W get this. Let's let's hop on over to my terminal. I had created a little folder, CTF, Google CTF, web, and then for that challenge, I've already downloaded the source. Let me clear that out. So 
you get a fresh perspective. There we go. Uh, let me move that source to a source.js because looking at it in this browser here, it looks like it's Express and like Node running JavaScript server side in the background. So let me go ahead and open that in Sublime Text and let's look through this code. So we are using the Express framework, that backend side of JavaScript. Looks like it'll be able to do some parsing things requiring utilities, which is seemingly local. Recaptcha. UUIDs, that, mo that must be the note kind of ID or title that we saw, and the data store. Okay. Recaptcha stuff. Choo Choo is running the Express engine. Looks like it's going to use EJS for kind of templating and pages. Getting static pages. They say Recaptcha need these. Interesting. And just a data store. Okay, this just looks like kind of the schema or functions as to how we're putting things in the database of what notes we have. Guest is probably us and public has got to be just about everything. So that's peculiar. Nothing weird there that I see that we could, I guess, get in the way of. But I mean, that's just going to be the database. That's just, just the data store itself. We create that database and then we have this little escape string functionality, which looks like it's going to do some replacing, oh, to remove those less than and greater than symbols that we might use for some HTML. But it looked like it rendered that out. That was weird. Did it do that when, when we use the H1 tags? So we render out the home page. If we post to it, we need to verify that we actually have a note to use. And we create the node ID, UUID. We saw that earlier. Add it in the database, et cetera, et cetera, and redirect it to the node ID. Properly escape the note. Okay, so can we not bother with some of these? Does it, does our XSS payloads or our cross-site scripting, will that kind of get in the way? Yeah, okay, so we run that escape string thing over here and that will, replace out our less than and greater than symbols. That's frustrating and annoying. Share your pace with TJ Mike. Okay, so that's us reporting and sending it to the admin and he will just straight up go to the page. Okay, cool. And there's a source code link, we've got that. And then just run, good enough. So let me actually look at the page itself that uh, once we shared a note, why didn't it display our script tags? Let me, let me start with the with the hello or the H1 header tags. I'm gonna view the source here. I hit control U on my keyboard. Oh, it's using DOM purify. Did we see that in the source code? DOM purify, purify, purify. That's not in the source code, it's all client side. So DOM purify is kind of like a big well-known um, sanitization library. It'll like help try and purify and, and clean her out and make sure there's no unneeded and unnecessary and evil and nefarious code. Oh, and there's some client side stuff here. Fix something funky in the source code that could lead to cross site scripting. What is that B137? Like byte 137? 1337? What? Can I go to a specific character in Sublime Text? <laughs> like, what is 1337? Is that literally where the weirdness is going to be? I guess I can, like, hex edit it. <laughs> let, me, let me hex edit source.js and go to uh, 1337. What is that? What is Python? Oh, no. Yeah, what is 1337 in hex? Is kind of what I'm asking. This is probably a stupid idea. This is probably not literally what's so useful whatsoever. Five, three, nine, this guy. Yeah, that's not, that, that, that's not what that B stands for. I don't, I don't know and I don't need to worry about it, but something could apparently lead to cross-site scripting. Okay, interesting. Oh, so this is the replace or that escape string function coming in action here. We can see our greater than and less than symbols were replaced with these hex codes. We have our node ID and it uses DOM Purify to sanitize it and clean it. So that's interesting. So that will prevent us from using some of the other things that we tried to use, like our script uh, alert one. Script, 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 please. 
and renders it out on the page with this. That doesn't help. Okay, so that's in the way. Um, maybe we could do peculiar things because if this is what's actually being put in the page, if we can't use our greater than and less than symbols, could we do anything funky to like break out of this string and get our inserted JavaScript code like leaking into this section of code here? Maybe we could try and just include a double quote to try and terminate that string. Let me try that. I have a lot of view sources open that I don't need, so let me close out some of those. Um, we'll just do a please sub, or I guess, yeah, so we would end that string and then we would have a semicolon to denote a new command. And then I guess I'll like, I'll comment out a message to see if that goes through as well. We have the source code, so we really only should see the, oh, I hit share with Mike, my bad. We really should only see those um, greater than less than symbols replaced, but they also escape our double quotes. Uh, okay. So looking at this code, and we're still in the phase of me trying this myself, me, me experimenting with this one. I did not know the solution and was going through it cold. I thought like maybe I should be finding some weakness in Dom Purify, right? Because if that was the library that they were using, there maybe there's like a Dom Purify exploit or cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. And so you can see me literally like some of my old revisited links where I would take a look at some of the potential vulnerabilities. Maybe they could have some cross-site scripting in some older vulnerable versions, like 2.0, 2.03. And I was like, oh goodness, maybe this is a lead. What do I have to work with? So I thought like, what version of Dom Purify are they using in this challenge? Uh, checking out the version of Dom Purify, just looking at it on the web page, I see GitHub Cure 53, Dom Purify blob, and maybe that's 2.08. And that's not very, that's not any of the research that I had done previously. <laughs> I'm looking for a version less than that that might potentially be vulnerable to this thing. And maybe that's still a complete guess due to my research. Uh, I also did things I just would search for version and I would do like, other version checks to see if that was really what it was in case they didn't have that note here in the header. I don't think I actually saw that 2.08 originally and I just searched for version. And when I saw that reference of 2.012, I was like, well, okay, I'm way out of luck. That's not gonna help me literally whatsoever. So at that point, playing the game real time and I have the classic millennial dilemma of my weak and low attention span, <laughs> after after an hour of like maybe fumbling with this and I didn't have a lead, I was like, all right, I should go do something that's actually productive for me personally. Not that this isn't, uh, but I was like, I, I should be building things. So I put this away and I waited for some write-ups to come out because I'm always looking forward to Google CTF write-ups or any, or any any bigger or legitimate capture the flag competition and trying to see what really cool techniques and stuff is in place here. So again, I say that with my disclaimer and my full frontal honesty and transparency. Full frontal is not the right word for that. <laughs> uh, I, I, I looked at these write-ups and I saw really what could have been peculiar and interesting there. And it's funny, while I was looking through this, I completely glossed right through the solution. This escape string little function here, a little thing that they're, they're putting together is odd and interesting. This comment, who wants a slice, is kind of taunting, it's kind of weird, and it doesn't really match any of the other comments. Maybe you could use that to like pick it out, needle in a haystack. But uh, what they do here, aside from this replace line, and I know this replace line kind of sticks out to you naturally because that's just kind of what you look for in most common capital flag stuff, or when I do a lot of PHP stuff, like PHP challenges, JavaScript is kind of an oddball thing for me to see when I look at Express or Node, but I know a lot more cool, legitimate CTFs are using these here. So put this away, put this away. We know that that'll work mentally. It'll be replacing our less than and greater than symbols, but this JSON unstringify with our input, this is an oddball thing. And we could research kind of what this does or we could step through it. It slices out seemingly the first element or like the first character in that 
iterable, that list, that string particularly, and then it'll go to negative one, so up to the very, very last character in that. Uh, if we were to tinker with this, if we were to play with it, maybe we could see it do some peculiar things. So let me put that over here and I'll put another terminal over here and I'll just run like node, right? So I can work with JavaScript locally on my side. If you don't have that uh, on Ubuntu, I think it's sudo apt install node.js. But let's just create a string like, hello, and there's our string. Now let's try to use some of that syntax that they use where they use JSON stringify unsafe. We could see the normal operation for it. JSON stringify hello, and it will just take, it'll be like a string of the string. So it's including these double quotes here. And if I actually had a, I guess another quote in here, hello, John, you can see that's going to just be escaped. So great. That's the gimmick and tweak that we fall into. But then they slice it, right? So they go ahead and slice from the first character all the way to the just about last one. So those surrounding quotations are removed and all you're just left with that escaped backslash or, or quote if you were to use it. So that would get in the way for you. Um, that's important to note. This is the normal functionality kind of what we've seen. But if we were to do some research on that JSON stringify, JSON stringify, you can see some references here, documentation. The JSON stringify method converts a JavaScript object or a value to a JSON string. Now, this is interesting because they note a JavaScript object, not just a value. When we're looking with our string that we supplied, like hello or our note or anything, that's gonna end up being just a regular value. That's going to be a string. Interestingly enough, if you were to pass it an object, and this is like literally the first example they show you, it's not going to end up putting those double quotes in there. In fact, it'll do weird things where it has the curly braces that denote an object in there. So if we were to tinker with this, let me try and just put together an object. It'd be like A can equal please sub or whatever. So now I don't include the dot slice here, removing the first and last characters, but you can see the very first character is an open curly brace and an ending curly brace for the last one. So if I were to slice this out, we don't actually have our double quotes escaped out. That's useful for us, right? Because now we could end up maybe potentially passing an object to this little note application and it could actually have our double quotes in there and escape out that string that we were trapped inside in the JavaScript that was visible on the web page. So I tried to do this originally. I knew that I could pass uh, after kind of, again, illusion is over, right? Our, our artifice is gone. We, <laughs> we've broken down the fourth wall. We know that we could potentially be, can I please go back? Okay, thank you. We would be sending in data through a variable here in the form with a post method and it's going to be named content. So knowing that I could maybe pass an object or an HTTP object through to it, how could I do that? That syntax usually means that you'll have to supply some like curly or, or, or square braces around uh, or just following after the name of the variable that you want to make an object. So I would do this with curl like just to see I originally just wanted to test this. So let me break out of node and let me go ahead and curl over to this URL. That will return the page for me, which is nice and fancy, but I do want to go ahead and post to this and it needs to actually have the content being supplied, right? So I will specify with tag D to denote the variable that I'll pass along content or the data, right, that we supply. Content is the name of that variable, and we'll just include for our sanity check, please sub. And this will redirect me to the note. Uh, I could very, very well pass along content with these open and close square braces. Now I know that I'm passing an object. And that seems to take it, and it'll redirect me again to a new note. In curl, you could follow redirects with that capital L. Um, but I think that keeps the post method in place. And I, off the top of my head, I didn't know how to just 
post to the first page and then not post to the second one. So I thought, okay, curl won't, won't, won't be a good one for me. Let's just fire this up in Python as kind of my, my usual knee jerk reaction. User bin environment, Python. I will go ahead and import requests and I will use requests.post on that URL. So I'll grab that. I'm using requests because I know I'm going to be using some internet or web functionality, making get and post requests to web pages. So I'll pass the URL there. I'll include data as a dictionary and content should be the name of that variable. But remember to pass an object, we need to include these curly braces here or uh, square braces, sorry. So I will go ahead and set that to please sub. And now let's capture that as a variable and then go ahead and print out the response from that. So r.text and I'll hit control B to run this. I'm using the build view plugin in Sublime Text so I can go ahead and move this into another tab. I hit uh, shift alt and two to open that other tab and I'll go ahead and mark that as HTML so it's a little bit easier to read and work with here. You can see over on that side, we do have the page returned to us and down below checking out the source code that should be rendered out on the page. Please sub has these double quotes here and we're, we're properly broken out of the original quote. So knowing that we could maybe start to inject our own JavaScript. Let's put a semicolon here over in our please sub payload. And obviously we want to be running real JavaScript, right? So let's use just an alert one for kind of a proof of concept. So it would look like a semicolon there and then our code being injected and we'll have to remove out these other double quotes. So let's have a forward slash forward slash there to comment that out. If I were to run that, now we should have that in our page with literal JavaScript and I have the node ID so I can go visit it in my browser to see if that will actually work for me. Let's go to slash that location and I have a little proof of concept JavaScript alert box Fantastic. Okay, now we have our JavaScript in place. So that means we could do the real cool regular cross-site scripting stuff when we were to send this over to TJ Mike or the admin. What you would normally want to do is capture their cookie. That's like the first thing you could always easily reach for like low hanging fruit. Maybe you'll have to do weird things to like read the admin page or drive him to someplace else to turn on a setting. Who knows? Uh, let's start with just simply grabbing his cookie. See if that's where that challenge leads us. Again, removing the illusion. We've read write-ups on this. The competition is now over. That is all we have to do is grab his cookie. Normally, I would do this with sort of a uh, bring your own box or BYOB external server that any internet object or other, other server online could reach and access. So I use a DigitalOcean droplet for something like that or something you could host up with Google Cloud or AWS or Azure, whatever you want. Uh, I'm actually just gonna end up doing this with Hookbin I've seen um, hookbin, hookbin.com is right. Okay, I've seen request bin. I think something weird happened to them. I've seen other ones that do this sort of thing, but this will just be an online service that will wait to catch, capture, and then go ahead and inspect HTTP requests. So you can use this as a really good way to just gather some external cookie or something if you're doing a cross-site scripting attack. It's hookbin.com. I'll go ahead and create a new endpoint. So I'll take this guy. This is our link. And once we have something that requests that link, we should be able to see all the captured data here if we were to refresh this page. So what I'll do is I'll use my kind of insert section for JavaScript. And I'll go ahead and create a new DOM object for an image. Super duper easy, right? I'll use a new image and then I'll take that object with a dot selector and I'll supply the source here. So SRC, and then we want to include a string value here, but we can't use our double quotes because we're already inside double quotes and we know that this will escape out our double quotes. So let's just use single quotes here because JavaScript will handle that nicely. Let's paste in that link and then let's go ahead and actually supply a question mark to supply some other variables in there like a get request. So I'll say C equals, so C could be a cookie or whatever value name you really, really want. Maybe C keeps it nice and easy for you. And let's just append on or add in with the plus sign, the document.cookie. So when I view this in my browser, maybe I have some cookie set and we would see that request go through in hook bin. Maybe I don't, maybe we don't see anything. But when we send this to TJ Mike or the admin, 
will get his cookie. So that is kind of all we want to do with this attack. Let me go ahead and post this request. Looks like that has came through. We see our code properly injected here, our new image source going to that location, co commenting out the rest of it. <laughs> and I'll have this node ID that I can copy and access within my browser. So let me hop over and go to this location. I will actually fire up net the network tab so you can kind of see this come through. If I go ahead and paste this in, I make a request to that. There we go. And do I make a request to this location? Looks like I do. That's hook bin right there. And that was a successful query. It looks like that responded or didn't actually give me anything back. Totally fine. Maybe it was just like a true thing, but that was able to go ahead and post some data there. So we know that this should work because our local test did run just fine here. If I were to go ahead and report this to TJ Mike, we should be able to see his result, his cookie, his data over on that hook bin. If we go back to the hook bin, if I refresh this page, do I see my request? Yes, I do. Perfect. So this came from me accessing it locally. You can see my web browser there and my query string, that C variable didn't actually have any cookie or anything associated with it. No problem. That's fine. We have our proof of concept. Now let's go ahead and share this with TJ Mike. Looks like that all went through and TJ Mike will appreciate your paste shortly. So let's hop back on over to Hookbin, refresh this page and see if we have anything new. I see something come through, which might be a different responder. And it is, I can see the headless Chrome user agent there. And we have our query string, our secret CTF express to troubles. <laughs> Nice, that's a good flag. So that's it, there is our flag. That was the technique, that was all that we needed to do. Uh, we could go ahead and submit that. I know the game's over now, but cool, whatever, we made 50 points on the easiest challenge that Google CTF had. But hey, hopefully that was a cool learning point and maybe you had some fun with it if you hadn't seen this sort of thing before. Uh, that was a peculiar thing for me. Admittedly, I, I wish I had spent more time on it. You know, every time a CTF comes by and we kind of regret, oh man, I, I wish I, did more for that. I wish I tried harder. I wish I kept banging my head against the wall because it would have been really, really cool to get that in the moment. But I don't want that to take away from the value of reading write-ups. So with that, shout out and kudos to all the incredible people that do release write-ups for these sort of things. You guys are also incredible, prolific, valuable members of the community, obviously. Obviously, you all are. Uh, but seeing everyone sharing the knowledge and helping everyone grow is, is a super cool thing. So shout out to everyone that wrote a write-up. And I'm very excited to read more of those for different challenges on Google CTF. And maybe I can showcase another if you guys thought this was valuable. I don't wanted this to be completely useless because obviously write-ups out there already exist. But maybe it's cool to see a walkthrough in a video format of it and uh, see everything, every single step and every single action that has to be taken and done for all that to work and see more of the thought process in, in real time. So I hope that's cool. But all right, that's enough of me jabbering. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do do the YouTube algorithm things. You know, I'm super duper grateful. If you could hit that like button, if you could maybe type something in the comments, whatever, I'd be grateful. If you could please subscribe, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you wanna go above the call, if you wanna go way above what is necessary, I would be incredibly flattered if you could drop a donation in. I, I always appreciate your support. Patreon, PayPal, those are links in the description. I just kind of tweaked up some of the Patreon uh, tiers, so I'm, I'd, be, I'd be super duper flattered to see your love and support. So thank you, thank you. All right, everybody, that's the end of the video. I'll see you tomorrow for some other cool stuff. Take care, I love you, bye. Thank you.